energy. <laughs> we need that. So we appreciate you so much. And we appreciate all of our team and those who are serving uh, in the house of the Lord this morning. Um, well, listen, uh, this is a, a Sunday that I want to focus on a couple of things uh, today. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be long before you this morning, uh, but uh, we have some, some, some stuff that's going on in our nation and in our world uh, today. And so my title today is The World is Messy, yes. right? And things are really, really kind of in a very tenuous place uh, these days. Um, I want to really end this service. I want to tell you how I want to end today. I want to end in a time of intercession and prayer for our, our, our nation and for our world. And I want to pray out of Psalms 46. And so that's that's where we're going to end today. Uh, we we want to just um, we want to focus on what what do we do? How do we respond? What do we need to know? when life is messy? What do we need to do when life is messy and when our world is messy? It's not just that our world is messy, but uh, if we really apply it to where we are today in the generations, uh, sometimes many of us are dealing with messy situations and things are happening all over the place. We had a couple of our members, uh, well, one of our members and uh, someone else we knew this morning uh, who was involved in a car accident, right? I mean, and just, uh, just thank God they're okay but the, the point of the matter is there's stuff happening all around us. Oh, yes, it is. And so um, what, I, what I sense and what I've been feeling, I was preparing my message and, you know, I could not get settled on what I wanted to say. What I, so I just kind of paused and say, Lord, what, where are we? You, you know, I feel like you're calling an audible here. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm open to the audible God. I am, uh, but you got to speak here real quick. It's one in the morning, and we need we need to we need to get somewhere. And um, some, and sometimes the Lord deals with me like that, right? It just just kind of, I just want you to just wait here for a minute, and I want you to hear my heart. Um, and so I want to just pull out a couple of thoughts out of Second Samuel chapter nine. Second Samuel chapter 9 is our text today. And this is the story of a guy by the name of Mephibosheth. And uh, he was out of the house of Saul, Jonathan, and many of you know the story, and I'm going to read it, but uh, the bottom line is his life got messy. And so there's some things that you need to know when, when everything around you seems to be in upset mode, seems to be in chaos mode, uh, because we need to respond uh, in faith. We need to respond in purpose. And here's another reason why I feel like we need to pray. AP News reports this morning that... The Russian President Putin put nuclear forces on high alert, escalating tensions. He has um, instructed his military to increase their state of readiness because of the threats of sanctions from the West. That's where we are right now. And that was just reported this morning. Now, I want to say something to that effect and to this effect because the world is messy right now. Things are happening in so many ways. And I think it's beyond our understanding sometimes um, and things are really telling us to make the world the earth is groaning trying to communicate something to the people of God history is good because in some cases it puts things into context uh, and we learn we try to learn not to repeat history uh, but some has aspects of this is not just history, it's present day. 
and we're living in a present day reality. That type of alert is not, has happened before, um, where's my history buff, but it, it happened in the 60s, Cuba, the Bay of Pigs, when President Kennedy was President of the United States. I don't know if we're there yet in this type of alert, but things are shifting rapidly, y'all. And you can feel the tension in the atmosphere. So I want to say this, don't buy into the claim that everybody, that to some people have clear understanding of what's going on. I, I think the prophets and the prognosticators are all searching. <laughs> What I do believe is that in our generation right now that, we're, that, that a lot of people who claim to know what they think they know are really living under a strong delusion because I don't really believe that anybody has the complete mind of God in terms of, of where, what, what, where we are and how we need to and what this means. I think God is choosing to hide things from those who think that they have a hotline to his mind. <laughs> Here's what I know. God shows things in, you know, as we see through a glass darkly, Paul said. But here, here's what I know uh, is that our trust level has to be at the highest right now. We have to, we have to trust God at the highest level. There's nothing like the season that we're in that'll drive people back to the place of prayer. We've been living life, right? Everybody been kind of doing their own thing and just trying to make it. And if the, if the pandemic didn't get our attention, maybe this will. So we can't just put God on the shelf and not realize that there are consequences to putting God on the shelf. <laughs> the old saints used to sing it, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Yes, yes. Every, they didn't have money, they didn't have wealth, they didn't have fame, but they understood their need for God. This generation that we're in right now, it's all of us, we have a lot. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot. And yet, uh, one of the things that we don't have, and this is not an indictment, this is not a condemnation message, it's just a reality. One of the things we don't have is a hunger and thirst for righteousness. And it's, Lord, Lord, I really need you. And so, how many of you agree when you hear stuff like that, we go, oh, I need God. We, we need what the world needs and what we need right now is, is God. And, um, you know, anyway, so perhaps um, we need to shift with what God is doing. All right, Second Samuel 9, just a couple of thoughts I want to share with you, then we're going to pray. Because I want to pray really in light of what I just shared with you. Second Samuel 9, verses 1 through 13. David asks, is there anyone still left in the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Not Now there was a servant of Saul's uh, in, of Saul's household named Ziba. And they summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he replied, At your service. The king asked, The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? And Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. You all know the story of Jonathan and David, right? John, if you don't know, Jonathan and David were boys. I'm just going to put it in a real simple term. But they were, they were, in covenant, they were covenant brothers uh, while Saul, Jonathan's uh, father, was king. And uh, because of his father's jealousy, they had a, they had a split. They, they just could not function together. Life just took them in different directions. Um, but at the end of the day, Jonathan and Saul lost their life in battle. And so David, in this particular instance, is now king over all 
of Israel. And God has given him favor and God has given him grace. And what he does is he wants to reach back to find somebody in Saul's house that he can show kindness to. So he's like, and so this is where we are. And he calls one of Saul's servants and he finds him to go to verse four. He says, um, where is he? Oh, wait a minute. Let me go back to verse three. And the king said, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness? Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. Now, this is important. He is lame in both feet. Now, back up. The reason why he was lame in both feet was when the war was going on, this boy, his name is Mephibosheth, he was a baby. And the nurse who was taking care of him was in a hurry to rush and to get everybody out, and she dropped him. And from that point on, uh, obviously his legs broke. And in those days, if he ran to the orthopedic, he had he, he, his legs probably set in the wrong way, and he was he was lame in both feet for all of his life. Now here we are, many many years later, because what we understand from this text is that Mephibosheth, that's the guy's name, he's not a boy anymore. He's a grown man and got kids. This is where he so he's a, he's up there in age now. But look at look at how this goes. He says Paul, uh, in verse four. He says, "Where is he?" David asked, and the king said, "Ziba answered, he is in the house of Machar, son of Amiel, in everybody know this Lodabar. All right. lo, lo, what what a place to be living. All right. The name alone says, man, this dude really fell on hard times. Okay." I'll tell you what Lodabar means in just a moment. So King David, verse 5, uh, had him brought from Lodabar. <laughs> from the house of Machir, son of Amiel, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. In verse 7, he says, do not be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. And I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will always, I love this, eat at my table. He goes from Lodabar to eating at the king's table. And Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice, get this, look at his self-image, a dead dog like me. He had fallen so hard, his life had gotten so messy that he thought nobody will ever regard him again. So when life is messy, I guess we have to ask our question, what do we do? What do we need to know? Here's the first thing I need you to know and understand is that when life is messy, know that God sees you. He sees you. And so right now, whatever, and this is just really a simple message, whatever you're challenged with, anybody overwhelmed? <laughs> anybody feel like, man, I just don't even know, it's hard for me to get up in the morning. All right, I take all of my vitamins and I still don't have any energy. Life has become so intense. Does anybody notice? Am I alone? Is it just me? You know? Most of us are juggling personally so many things. And then you throw on top of what's happening globally. It's overwhelming. And so we have to remind ourselves very simply that God is always kind. And he's looking to show kindness to those who will open up their hearts, even in the midst of the mess, because he's in covenant with us. He understands who we are. He understands where we are. Feels like, you know, I, I said this last Sunday, I know sometimes you feel like you're beefing with God, but God is not mad at you. That God is, is looking out for you, that he sees you right where you are, and he understands where I don't care what you're dealing with, beloved. I don't know if you're going through financial struggles. I don't know if you're going through divorce. I don't care if you're going through health issues. All of that. God sees you. 
And, and he, is, he is willing, he is, he is looking, the Bible says, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are directed toward him. So everybody just put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, open up my heart. Show yourself strong. It's like he, he's going to come in, show himself strong. And so this is what the king did. He says, look, I'm looking to show kindness. He, he's a representation of God who's looking to show kindness to us who's looking to, to, to help us to realize that in the face of everything that's going on, that he sees us. Even in your messy situation, God wants to show you kindness. He is looking out for you. Great is your mercy toward us. Great is your grace toward us. His divine ability, his willingness to see us through. Psalms 138 verse 6 says, Though the Lord is high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from before. So even though God is, he says, if you just humble yourself before me, he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exalt you in due season. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is, you have to know that God cares. This boy was lame in both feet. <laughs> and Lodabar actually means no pasture. It means barren place. So he was at rock bottom. Where he was, nothing was bearing fruit. His life was completely a desert place. Isn't it just like God when you are in a place of barrenness, God brings fruitfulness when you need it? He knows how to bring you out of the barren place and put you in a broader place. And that's what he was. You know, the name, it's interesting, but the name Mephibosheth means shameful. So he had a double whammy. <laughs> He was in a low place and he felt shame about himself. I love that song we sang this morning. There is no bondage, every shame, every guilt erased. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Ah, yeah, that's what God comes to do. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We, we have to know that he sees. We have to know that he cares. And sometimes our conditions are not physical. Sometimes they're emotional. Sometimes we have very negative ideas about who we are. And this is why it's important really to pour into, particularly our young people, to pour into them and speak words of life over them. Words of strength over them. Words of courage over them. I tell my daughter all the time, you so cute. It, 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 the, the, so the first boy who says that, she, it won't be the first time she heard it. You, you girl, you, you good looking, you, uh, you, uh, you all that, you, you, don't worry, look. And so when somebody can say, hey, you cute, like, I already heard that already, whatever. What, you, what, you, what, what else you got? <laughs> You're going to have to come stronger than that. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Okay, she's in, she's, <laughs> I usually get to talk about her when she's not in church, but I talk about her anyway. All right, she's, uh, Psalms 138.7. Psalms 138, 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble. Oh, what does it say, y'all? What's that next sentence? Come on, say it out loud. Say it again. Say it one more time. You preserve my life. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you're alive? And that you didn't really do a whole, he preserved you. L listen, even through what's happening in the world today, we got to be confident that God knows how to preserve our lives. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my enemies, of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. So you have to understand and we have to know and be confident that when God cares, no doubt, no doubt this young man was troubled, but God, through the king, saw him. So we have to be willing and obedient, Psalms 119. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And here's the last thing that I want to mention, is that when the world is messy and when life is messy, you need to know that God restores. Yes. 
2 Samuel 9, verses 7 through 8, the king said, Do not be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show kindness to you. I, I love this, I will restore you. I will restore you. I will restore you, all the land that belonged to your... Listen, there's some generational blessings that you've just been sitting on. And God says it's time for restoration to happen in your life. Generational blessings that God wants to release and unleash in our lives. Listen, I want everything that God has for me. Yes. And so he is a restorer. He's a restorer of fortune. He's a restorer of dreams. He's a restorer of purpose. This restoring that God does is full restoration. You know, what I love about God is he's not alarmed and he's not afraid of messy situations. Isn't that good news? Some people are allergic to mess. Some people like mess. <laughs> God knows how to get in the middle of the mess and bring restoration out of it. This is what I've learned about God, and at least as I've gotten older, he wastes nothing. That's right, Every, every moment, every opportunity, God knows how to get us where we need to be. And so we will see the will of God manifested in our lives because he will restore all. Everybody said that, Lord, restore all. And then he says, you'll always eat at my table. He went from barren to abundance. That's what restoration is. He went from barren to abundance. People's lives are messy, and we embrace, we embrace, you embrace, <laughs> life embraces the mess, but we have to be humble and open and say yes to God and be thankful. So, um, a couple more scriptures, and then I want to really focus in on prayer. So, I, I'm, I'm going to ask my, my prayer team to help me this morning. That's going to be Dwight. That's going to be Lucretia. That's going to be Al. These folks this morning, I'm so proud of them. These folks this morning in prayer had already set the table for what God wanted to do today. I'm, the seats that you're sitting on, they were walking through the aisles and just praying already. So you're sitting on prayed seats. <laughs> you just didn't walk in here. God was already preparing the table for you as you came into the place. And when I came in, they were already praying for the nations of the earth. I didn't ask them to do that. They were already praying for what was going on globally before they even understood the report that I just read to you earlier. They were already preparing and saying, Lord, you can intervene. You can do more than what man can do. See, what I think is that there's a devil that's been unleashed. That's trying to destroy some stuff. Who wins by launching nuclear weapons? Because if you launch one and me, we got four or five we can launch back at you. Who wins? All that's going to happen is all of us going to be running to the store to stock up on water. Remind me, I'm going to get some water today, okay? <laughs> mm. Psalms 138, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Do not abandon the work of your hands. I love Psalms 120, verses 1 through 4. Put this one on the screen in the NIV. Psalms, one, Psalms 20, verses 1 through 4. Psalms 20, verses 1 through 4. It says, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Yes. Our world is in distress right now, y'all. Yes. Love that scripture, Al. Psalms 2. The nations are enraged. Yes. But God laughs. He says, you think you're in charge. I'm in charge. They laugh in derision. Say, but the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send help. May, may he send you help. 
home from the sanctuary. Come on, we need help. <laughs> we need help. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. God is still in the business of delivering, of healing, of restoring, of strengthening us. And so even though uh, our hearts, at least I'll, I'll just be honest with you, my heart is troubled. Yes. It's not in despair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come on over, Lamar, and begin to play softly. You three that I just named, go ahead and get you some microphones. Come on up here. We're just going to have a time of intercession. We won't be long. But we're just going to have a time of intercession out of Psalms 46. Have y'all got Psalms 46 on your phones or something? Y'all grab them. It's Psalms 46. And I'm going to read it. I love what the Lord did through them this morning. And I'm just... is messy but God's faithful y'all come on the stage behind me please so that we can see you on camera so that those who are watching online can connect with us you can get Psalms 1 Psalms 46 out of the NIV and put it on the screen I woke up this morning and this scripture arrested me after wrestling late into the morning, I woke up this morning and this scripture arrested me. And I just felt like the Lord saying, pray out of that today. Pray out of that. Here it is. God is our refuge and strength. Yes. And ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way. And the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river. Come on, I want you to engage in the text, not just listen to me. I want you to really begin to allow this to be the seed that goes into your heart this week. Here it is. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. In other words, God provides a way yes. in the midst of the mess. The holy place where the most high dwells, God is within her. She will not fall. God would help her at break of day. Verse 6, here it is. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. Kingdoms fall. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kingdoms fall. You know, God judges nations. <laughs> I'm, I'm pausing, forgive me, I'm pausing, I'm pausing because... Um, I'm seeing something. And I'm, and I'm hesitant to say what I'm seeing. But anyway, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. God is declaring something in the earth today. What looks like a tragedy is a divine judgment. Mm. Kingdoms fall. It's a story in the Bible where Ahab. sent a lying prophet to trick him so that he could fall. It was divine 
set up. Ah, I digress, but here's the point. God's going to do something. This is. Amen. This is where I'm, I promise you, I'm in, the, I'm in the moment. I'm seeing things through a glass darkly. I, and I don't have a clear picture, but I'm seeing stuff, and it's just there's glimpses of things that are happening. And by, I by no means declare that I'm some national prophet. I'm not. But as we're, as we're here in this moment, God is m moving some pieces. So, uh, I don't want to get cliche is, but this battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Here's what we need to know as people of God. Because this is bigger than just Christian, the, the American Christian church. God is setting up nations for a purpose. And he's shifting nations for a purpose. The Lord God Almighty, verse 7, is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come see what the Lord has done. The desolation he has brought on the earth that he brought. Here it is, verse 9. This is what we're praying towards. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. You know, you know, the responsibility of Christians in this hour is not to be closed minded and just kind of live in our little own little bubble. It doesn't affect me, so I don't, whatever. I just try to get my rent paid. Uh, we got we to gotta go beyond that. We have, a, we have a responsibility to put our little stuff aside and go, God, you need the intercessor on the, on the wall right now. You, 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 you need somebody to stand in the gap right now. But he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow uh, and shatters the spear. And he burns the shields with fire. All of the weaponry of the enemy, he says, God knows how to cause it to shatter. And this is what he commands us, verse 10. Be still and know Amen. that I am God. Amen. Amen. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord, all God, uh, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Yes, yes, yes. Keep it on verse 10. Be still. Everybody just be still. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. So, Father, we come in this place of intercession right now. And you all just feel free to pray about whatever verse I just read. <laughs> okay? I'm, I know I'm putting y'all on the spot, but y'all y'all prepare. Y'all ready. So, Father, we thank you that you are the God who is our refuge, that you are the God who is our strength. You are the God who is ever-present help in time of trouble. You are the God who knows what we need. And so, Father, we stand as your people in the place of intercession. We stand in this moment, in this hour, and we ask you, God, to intervene in the way that you desire to intervene. We need a move of your spirit. You declare, God, that you will cause wars to cease. And so, Father, we speak peace over this nation and over our land. We pray, Lord, for your divine wisdom. This is greater than politicians. Yes. This is greater than administrations. Yes. We need you, no matter who is in charge, to touch hearts of men in the direction and in the way you desire, God. This is not an argument. This is a divine move that we are asking you, Lord, to intervene. We approach it and attack it from a spiritual standpoint. We attack it in the spirit realm. We say, Lord, let your spirit move upon the, the, the kings of the earth, of the presidents of the earth, of the prime ministers of the earth. Let your will be done and let your kingdom come. For we as your people, we undergird the, the nations of the earth and the leader with prayer right now. We intercede, God. We stand in the gap. We need your move, God. We need your spirit to hover over this land and hover over Ukraine and hover over Russia and hover over Belarus and Poland and Czech Republic and the Middle East and Europe 
and all of the nations of the earth over there. Yes, Lord. Over Israel, over all of the lands that you have purposed, that you have called into existence. We rebuke the hand of the enemy that comes to kill and to steal and destroy. Lord, your gospel still needs to be preached to all nations. And at the end of the day, Lord, I believe this is about your kingdom coming and your righteous rule and reign in, in the earth and that the gospel being ministered to all nations, God. Yes, Lord. Every nation that is closed, every nation that is uh, opposed to the truth of your word, God, we pray, Lord, for divine opening right now. Lord, this is not about the Russian people. There are great people in that nation. Yes, yes, yes. It's not about the people of Ukraine. It's, it's, there are great people in all of these countries. But we ask you to touch the hearts of leaders right now. We come against destruction and mayhem and annihilation over our lands right now. We are still and know that you are God. We ask, Lord, for you to be exalted in the earth. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Lucretia. Dear Heavenly Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for another day, for another day in your presence, Lord. I thank you for each and every person that's here today, Lord, that those that are sitting here in person, those that are online, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can come into agreement to have peace that surpasses all understanding yes, because you give us your peace, yes, Lord. Lord. We can lay our burdens upon you, Lord, because your burden is easy and, and your yoke is light, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty on this day, Lord, because because of your sovereignty, you are in control, Lord. When seeing things seem to be confusing, messy, when things just seem to be in turmoil and chaos, Lord, you are in control, Lord. You are sovereign. You are peace because, Lord, not, nothing is beyond your control, Lord, and I just thank you, Lord, for that. When we seem to be going through hardships and trials, Lord, you are still in control and you are still sovereign, Lord. You are still good, Lord. You are the great I am, Lord, and I just thank you, Lord, for that. There are so many people who are hurting, who are fearful, yes. Lord, and as your people, we can show them how in Christ Jesus we can have peace, Lord. Yes, Lord. How in Christ Jesus we can have healing, Lord. Lord, whether that's physical healing, whether that's emotional or mental healing, whether that's spiritual healing, Lord. What happens in this world and what we see, there are, there are things and forces and spirits that are happening that we cannot see, Lord, and we pray against those things. Lord, we pray against greed and gluttony, Lord. We pray against division and conflict and anger, Lord. We pray against those who just want to hurt others just for the sake of hurting others, Lord. Those that are just being selfish, Lord. We pray against selfishness, Lord. We pray against all things that are not of you, Lord. Things that are causing conflict and strife in our lives, Lord, in this world, Lord. Lord, I t I, we're going to take this as an opportunity to show the world who you are, Lord. What it's like to be a child of God, Lord, to follow Jesus Christ, Lord. Jesus Christ had hardship. He had conflict. He had so many issues that he dealt with, Lord. But he still lived for you, Lord. And because of his death, burial, and resurrection, because of the blood of Jesus, we can plead the blood of Jesus over any person in any situation, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that intercedes on, this, on our behalf, Lord, that groans and complains on our behalf, Lord. We may not know what to say. We may not know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit does, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided for us, Lord, in the spirit realm to fight, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the armor of God. I thank you, Lord, for your boots of peace, your belt of truth, your breastplate of righteousness, you, your helmet of salvation, your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Lord. I thank you, Lord, we can fight with the word, Lord, and your um, shield of faith, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can have a humble faith, where we know that you are ultimately in control, Lord. It isn't necessarily what we do, but what you do, and you may do through us. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to be vessels on your behalf, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be an example on this earth 
of you, Lord. Yeah. Lord, thank you for allowing us to live, like, thank you for allowing us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and allow him to live in us, Lord, so that way we can show people what it's like to be in relationship with God, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, we can come to you with all these cares, all these concerns, and you listen to us, and you act on our behalf, yes, Lord. Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. We can trust you, Lord. Lord you told us. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not yes, on thine own understanding. You, in all thy ways, we will acknowledge you and you will direct our path, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for thank that. You, Lord. Lord, please speak to us so that way we can live out the purpose you have for us, yes. both individually but also corporately as yes, a body, Lord. Lord. I thank you, Lord, for just allowing us to come together to pray and intercede for not just ourselves, but the, the world, the body of Christ, yeah, those yeah. who may not even know Christ. Lord, this can be an opportunity for to show them Christ, Lord, and Christ's love and Christ's peace, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing, for being sovereign and being trustworthy, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Three minutes, three minutes each. Go ahead. Dear Father in heaven, you are our refuge. You are our strength. You are our strength. You are our presence in a time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, you are our God. Ultimately, Father. There will never be any real peace until Jesus reigns. And my prayer is that your kingdom come and that your will be done on yes, earth Lord. as it is in heaven. Yes, Lord. But Father, we are part of your kingdom, your people here in this earth. In the meantime, Father, give us the strength and the power to intercede on behalf of your name and on behalf of your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Let us live for the kingdom. Let us live as your people. Yes, Lord. Let your light shine through us that a lost world can see that there is hope. Yes, Lord. Let them look at your people and say, there's a man and a woman yes, of God. Jesus. The people of God, help us to shine bright in these dark hours. Yes, Let us be salt to a world that is so bland and hateful. Father, I, I pray that we may be able to be the difference. Let your people be the difference. Yes, Lord. Strengthen us, Father. Strengthen Help us live for you. Yes. It's no longer us. It's you. You are our God. You are our Savior. And it's all about you all about and our you. relationship to you. It's all about you, God. Yeah. Help us, Father. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
And oh God, our focus is on you today, oh God. God, we thank you right now that we will be still and know that you are God. Besides you, there is no other, oh God. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will be exalted, oh God, in all the earth, oh God. And they will know that you are God. The Lord is almighty. He is with us. The God of Jacob, our fortress. God, have your way today, oh God. Have your way, God. Give us a renewed strength, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Let us not be concerned with our situations and our circumstances. But we look to you, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who yes, for the joy are. that was set before, endured the cross, oh God. Yes. Now spoke about the cross, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. He endured the cross, despised the shame. There's no more of a of guilt. There's no more shame, oh God. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are exalted, oh God. You are exalted, God. You are glorified, oh God. We are victorious. You are victorious. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. I... Hey, Lamar. For thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Exalted far above all God. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth, the sea, and the sky. For thou art exalted. This is an old one, but this is appropriate. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted. Just be still right now. Just worship the Lord right where you are.
this is a microcosm of what I believe the Lord is going to do globally, but God's going to deal with the enemies that have been plaguing you. Every aggression where the enemy has tried to take you out and destroy your purpose, destroy your family. I just see the hand of the Lord intervening on your behalf right now. Some, some, for some, you've just been so overwhelmed. But I see the strong hand of the Lord coming in to deliver, to break you out, to cause. So whatever the, the God is going to deal with the aggressor, the aggression, everything that's coming against you, every weapon that's formed against you. It didn't say it wouldn't be formed, but it said it would not prosper. Thank you, Lord. And so we come against every weapon of war and we declare it will fail. It will not prosper. Hallelujah. I don't care what the report has been. I don't care what you're feeling right now. As if you cannot make it, you will live and not die. Thank Glory to God. To so declare the works of the Lord. The strong hand of the Lord is upon you. He's intervening. He's going to show himself strong. And so we exalt you, Lord. Our responsibility and our assignment is just to lift him high. Whatever your problem is, just lift him high. And that's why this song is in the atmosphere right now. Let's sing it again. We exalt thee. Above everything, 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 everything. We exalt thee. Just worship him. I love you, Lord. And I love you, Lord. And I live my voice. It's a little old school worship, y'all. time I love stand on your feet if you're able if you're able we're going to get ready to go in a few moments I just feel like there's a moment of surrender that we all need to engage in right now 
So just surrender your hearts to the Lord in a fresh way. As we sing, I surrender all. Figure that out, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, surrender. So this is the last song. Come on, let's just go right there in that place. Yes, we do, Lord. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Clap your hands to the Lord like you got victory in the place. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how you feel, but I just feel like the Lord wanted to do this and recalibrate our hearts. And I hope that you felt that in the spirit today. The Lord just realigned some things in your spirit and your heart. Be okay with that. And then walk in that throughout the rest of this week. So we pray over you. Lord, we thank you for every heart and every life. Thank you for this service. Thank you for our time together. That you allowed us to just enter into this sacred, solemn, sovereign place. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May he cover you with his name, the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. First time visitors, please go out and see us.